Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel for those of you who don't already know me or for those of you who are on my channel for the first time. Hi, my name is Yasmin. So if you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you would already know that I go to McGill University in Montreal and I actually asked you guys to send me all of your questions about McGill and Montreal on my Instagram so I could do a little Q&A for you guys. And I actually got so many more questions than I thought, so this video might be a little bit long. But before I get started, I just wanted to say I post new videos every single Tuesday on McGill, Montreal, and just some fun vlogs. So make sure you guys hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification button so you guys get notified every single time I make a post. Okay, so I have all the questions on my phone, but I'm going in random order. What made you choose McGill and what is your major? P.S. I love your content. Thank you. I love you. Honestly, growing up, I never even thought about where I would go in the world to study, like to go for university. Like I always thought that I would end up in Lebanon studying at AUB because I don't know. Y'all already know I'm Lebanese. So my family just thought we would all end up back in Lebanon at some point. But then when I was in like like eighth or ninth grade my sister started to apply to unis and she really wanted to go to Canada my parents were kind of hesitant just because it's so far away and you know their first child or whatever but then the situation started to get so bad in Lebanon so my parents would really really encourage like Canada and it was just like Canada was the option at that point all I knew was that you know I'm gonna end up in Canada like I never really like thought about it I never really cared my sister ended up studying at McGill and at that point I knew knew nothing about McGill. I've never even heard of it until she got in. And all I knew was that it is the number one uni in Canada or one of, you know, the best. Ever since then, I've never really thought of any other uni. Like, all I knew was that McGill was the best and I want to study amongst the best. My other sister ended up studying at University of Toronto, so that was something that I was also considering. Um, but the thing is, I was leaning to more towards McGill just because of the city, you know. that I know that Montreal is a student city and Toronto is more of a working city, so I don't know. I've just always had it in my head like McGill, McGill, McGill. And to answer your second question, I'm majoring in International Development Studies and I have a double mind in economics and marketing and I love 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 my major like I love IDS because it really is so interdisciplinary and I feel like pairing it with my minors offers a more well-rounded education if that makes sense how is McGill uni life is it fun okay so the thing is what I love about McGill students is that they're very work hard, play hard. You know, like it's no secret. We all know that McGill is a hard university and you need to be on your A game all the time. But the darker the darkness, the brighter the light. Meaning losing your sanity is actually really well balanced out with the huge party culture at McGill. Even Playboy actually ranked McGill as one of North America's top party schools. The thing is, when you think of the term party school, you think all fun, not that serious when it comes to academics. But like I said, at McGill, there's a balance. It's not like you can study a little bit, party a little bit. No, you have to work really really hard and then party really really hard however I'm not saying that you can do this every single weekend no no you're gonna find yourself sacrificing a lot of time to sit and work on your own because you're gonna have to you know to answer your question in my experience I've been having fun but in the end of the day every experience is what you make of it you know how hard is it very how many hours do you study a day to get a decent grade? I don't know, I feel like I can give specific hours just because, you know, every class is different, so it really depends. For example, in arts and management courses, you're gonna find that there are a lot of required readings to do before class and sometimes the readings are just complementary to the lecture but sometimes you need those readings before class so you can understand what's actually happening in the lecture. Some profs will give you multiple readings before class and each reading is like 20-30 pages and you're not just reading, you're reading, you're understanding and you're taking notes and honestly it does take time and all of this is before the lecture even begins and then you have your lecture 
lecture which is like an hour or two and then after you need to organize your notes to make sure that when you're looking back at it the lecture actually makes sense and then you need to revise and you're also going to find that in a lot of arts courses there are many essays or sometimes weekly reading responses so i don't know there's just there's always work to do you know so i can't say study for x amount of time and you'll get a decent grade because you're gonna be working a lot regardless and that doesn't necessarily guarantee a good grade you know it's not about the hours that you put into it it's about understanding and applying what your profs and your TAs are asking from you. Oh my god guys, please don't have too much pride to ask questions, especially if you're going to be doing weekly essays or even on your midterms, your exams. Like sometimes the profs or the TAs would tell me clearly you're understanding the material like you didn't go wrong anywhere there it's just that this isn't what we're looking for you know we're looking for something more specific it's just understanding what the profs and the ta's are asking from you oh my god i literally talk about this all the time but if you're coming to mcgill with the attitude or the mindset that i was the best in high school or i was the smartest or i was one of the smartest then you're gonna have to change that mindset because when you get to mcgill you're gonna realize that everyone is just as smart as you are even smarter so if you're struggling you're gonna have to ask for help just like everyone else like just, just don't have too much pride what are the vaccines accepted at McGill or Canada in general Pfizer Moderna AstraZeneca Johnson & Johnson what are the fees for a Canadian from Montreal okay so if you guys don't already know this at McGill there are three categories for tuition international students canadian students not from quebec and canadian students from quebec international students pay the most and canadian students from quebec pay the least so your tuition also depends on your faculty arts and management are the cheapest science and engineering are the costliest so for those of you who don't know this you're not paying your tuition per semester you're paying per course so let's say in the fall semester you take four courses and in the winter semester you take five courses you're gonna be paying less in the fall than you are gonna be paying in the winter so i would say if you're a canadian from montreal or like from quebec then you'd be paying between five to eight thousand Canadian dollars a year I would say and if you're an international student then you're definitely paying more than ten thousand dollars but what I do know is that compared to the rest of Canada or at least relative to other universities McGill has pretty affordable tuition from based on my research was it easy to fit in or did it take time mm, I don't know I feel like you don't fit in in uni, you know, you find your people or you find your place. Does that make sense? I actually made a whole other video on how to make friends in uni and I linked that in the description box down below if you guys want to check that out. But I basically talked about how you have full control over the energy that you allow into your life, you know? You don't fit in. You choose where you want to be. You choose who you want to be around. And honestly, it's okay if you don't find your people or find your place right away like McGill literally has 40,000 students you're bound to find your place eventually whether that's through group work in class clubs Greek life whatever it is you will find it how do people get good GPAs if it's as hard as everyone says okay so the thing is yes McGill is a hard university and no not everyone gets amazing GPAs keep in mind that the students that go to McGill were you know some of the top in their graduating class or at least in the top 20% of their graduating class so a lot of them or most of them already have strong academic capabilities you know and I'm not talking grades at all I'm talking about the way that you learn you know it's not about memorizing it's about grasping concepts and turning it into something you know for me personally the classes that i have a's in are the classes where i expressed myself the most like let's say for example even when i'm writing essays like obviously yeah, i'm following the instructions i'm using the resources but 
I allow room for self-expression, you know? Like actually like using your brain, does that make sense? But yeah, other than that, a really big part of getting good grades or a good GPA, like I said earlier, is understanding what the profs and the TAs are asking from you. Oh my God, guys, let me tell you. So sometimes, let's say the prof will give you a really, really complex question and tell you to answer it in 200 to 300 words only but you cannot fit that type of information to 200 and 300 words. But the, the, but the whole point of why they're doing that is because they want you to look at the question from a certain angle. You know, they want you to be concise. They're looking for something specific. That's why I say, try to understand what the prof or the TAs are actually asking from you. Best elective. In my first year, my favorite elective or like my favorite class was Geog 216, which is Geography of the World Economy with Professor Coombs. Oh my God, I love this course. It's the reason that I chose to do International Development Studies as my major because it introduced development and underdevelopment in a new way for me because this class basically talks about the world economic system in a geographic context and I don't know I just thought it was really interesting and it was really fun for me so I loved it I would definitely recommend and it's it's not that difficult oh my god guys in my second year my favorite course or elective of all time up till now is anthropology 206 which is anthropology of environment and culture with professor adam something but this class is so interesting it's all about the social and cultural adaptations we as humans have in different environments and it's all about cultural construction and destruction and uh, management and conflict and it's just it's so interesting i love it and there really is so much room for you to express yourself and i just i love this prof so much because he's so sweet he's so fun he always shows up to class with such good energy and he really encourages open discussion you know he makes the class interesting but yeah I would definitely recommend I recommend this class to everyone all the time in my first year I actually also took two language courses and they were intermediate Arabic one and two and I love those courses they were so fun like the thing is I'm Arab so I obviously have a background in Arabic but English was my first language you know so I'm more comfortable with it like I speak in English to my parents my friends like I think in English you know but I also wanted to brush up on my Arabic I needed to strengthen it a little bit you know it's my mother language so I took those courses and it was so fun and honestly I met so many nice people you know the language classes tend to be so much smaller like I was literally in a class of seven or eight and yeah I just think language courses are really fun I actually registered for French courses in my third year so I'm excited for that I do want to point out that there are very few bird classes you can take at McGill that'll you know help boost your gpa so i do just wanted to point out that you guys are gonna have to be working really hard even for your electives i'll be living off campus what are some things i can do on campus to be more involved there's clubs student societies student run organizations varsity teams like there are so many things you can join or be involved in where you'd be doing an activity and i feel like those are the best ways to get to know people or to be more involved because you're you're gonna be around others that are interested in doing the same activities or just interested in the same things as you are there are also other things you can do like for example there's always events going on there's science games oap hype carney etc etc there's always something happening but i do have to say that not everything is always so clear so i highly highly recommend that you guys Stay posted with what's going on on the Facebook group. I used to never use Facebook until I got to uni because that's how you connect. That's where all the information is. Would you recommend living with roommates or living alone and why? Okay, so the thing is both have their pros and cons, but in the end of the day, it really just depends on your preference. I prefer to live alone just because I can spend all day with my friends but when i go home i like to have my alone time you know like i'm the type of person who really values their alone time just for my peace of mind i mean you can definitely have your own space even if you live with a roommate but 
personally i don't want my personal space to be in my room only you know like i want to be able to move freely around the house and do whatever i want and invite whoever i want and make my own rules and like cook whatever i want and just just move freely around you know a big part of it for me is also hygiene like not everyone is gonna be on the same level of hygiene as you know like imagine living with someone who doesn't have the same level of cleanliness when it comes to the bathroom or the dishes or the kitchen or just shared spaces you know like you're also it's also your house or your apartment you want to be comfortable too so i don't know i feel like that can cause problems i don't know but that is one of the reasons i would prefer to live alone you know but i do have to say that living with a roommate or roommates is much more fun like i used to live with my sister for a while and we had a blast but she moved for grad school honestly there are those days where sometimes it's hard like you go to sleep and you think like there's no one sleeping in the room next to me or you know sometimes i see something funny or something i just want to show her and i go to her room and then there's there's no one there <laughs> or sometimes there are those days where i don't want to go out but then i don't want to be alone in the house you know like it's just it's nice living with someone because it's nice having another presence in the house you know it's a vibe but yeah in the end of the day it just goes back to your preferences or whatever you prioritize okay, what's the best part of mcgill oh my god guys okay this is gonna sound so cliche but honestly you're literally surrounded with such brilliant minds so i feel like it's such a privilege to be able to debate and engage and learn from others you know i think it's such a good experience for me personally would you rather attend mcgill or attend the best uni in the uae for me this is a no-brainer i would definitely definitely choose mcgill when you're going to uni you're not just looking at the uni you're looking at it as a package what environment are you going to be in and you know i love the uae like i was raised there it's literally my home and i'm so so blessed i've had such a privileged life growing up there it's the safest place in the world great diversity great education luxury lifestyle all of that but also you're shielded you know you're so protected that at a point you need to leave and explore the world living in the west it's a completely different way of life not better but not worse it's just different and personally i feel like living in canada i've been able to experience things that allow you to grow as a person and it changes your perspective and it changes just like the way you behave and your outlook on life and and i don't know i just feel like at this age if you want to grow as a person you can't stay in the same place you've always been you know but that's just my personal opinion and also another thing in canada i have so much more opportunity in terms of experience and work and all of that because you can start working from the age of 14 but in the uae you can't really do that and that's always been an issue for me you know because this opens up a lot of opportunities opportunities for you you know another thing if we're talking about growing as a person you know also in canada there's freedom of speech so you're able to engage in conversations and debates that maybe i couldn't have had before you can gather with hundreds or thousands of people that care so deeply about the same thing that you do and go protest about it i don't know those things they matter to me you know those things are stuff that i value and again there are so many things about the uae that i love more and so many things about Montreal that I love more but you know just for me at this age going to McGill and living in Montreal is the right place for me like to experience things and like grow as a person like that's just my personal opinion and not to mention McGill is one of the top 30 universities in the world and that's been a dream for me like i would not trade that for anything how did you cope with the leap from high school to uni how hard was it for you so when it comes to academics it honestly wasn't that bad like obviously the material is harder and the workload is insane but back in high school i was in the ib program so it really strengthened my 
essay writing skills, time management skills, test taking skills, you know, I learned how to balance. So when I went to uni and I had a 1000 word essay due twice a week, it wasn't crazy. Like don't get me wrong, it's hard and it sucks, but it wasn't something that was new to me, you know? But what I definitely, definitely saw a change in was my work ethic. Oh my god guys, don't even get me started. When I look back at myself, I can't believe in high school I used to cram all the time like i would just leave everything to the last minute but don't get me wrong i worked hard but i could have worked harder and i think that a lot of that came from a lack of self-confidence oh my god guys let me tell you about this disgustingly competitive mindset that some people had and i was surrounded by some of these people in high school i've always always known that i wanted to go in the economics business sustainability stream you know like this that's my area of interest that's my passion some people had the mindset that if you're not in science or if you're not in STEM that you're just not as smart and I knew that that was not true because I could do it if I wanted to anyone can do it if they want to but that kind of environment is going to affect you because people try to make you feel like you're intellectually inferior so subconsciously I would feel like maybe I'm just not smart enough, you know, or maybe I wouldn't pass even if I tried, like that type of thing. But once I went to uni, I was in this environment where I'm surrounded by smart people and they don't judge, they don't compare, like we're all on the same level, that's why we're both here type of thing. And once I built that self-confidence, it completely changed my work ethic because I was able to work harder now that I could see my own potential. Does that make sense? And don't get me wrong, McGill does have a very very competitive environment but it's not toxic you know at least for me that's not how I feel I mean I don't know that might change later but so far so good but yeah I don't know why I went off on a tangent right now but self-confidence it changes your life how can we get scholarships at McGill honestly I don't know much about scholarships but I've linked a page of the McGill website down below where all the different scholarships are listed with the different requirements in the application process is it suitable for mechanical engineering students? Yes, definitely. There's a great engineering program. But what I do know is that McGill is most known for its science programs. Can you talk about the application process? Yes, okay. So what I remember is that it was so easy to apply to McGill. Like there's no third party website or whatever. You literally just use the McGill portal. And I don't really remember much about the application process other than the fact that you just apply with your grades. Like there's no supplemental forms, no essays, no nothing. It's it's just your grades. If and when you get your acceptance, it's only conditional. So once you graduate and you get your final grades, it's your school's responsibility to spend to send those final grades to McGill so they can give you like your final acceptance or rejection. So if you're like me and you're in the IB program, then McGill just gets your grades from IB. How do you support yourself as an international student in Montreal? Is it possible to manage if your family can't help financially support you? So personally, I get financial support from my parents, but I would definitely say it's possible to support yourself as an international student in Montreal because I know a couple people who do it. Like I know a couple people who work and pay their own bills and still study full time. So yeah, if you wanna do that, it's definitely possible. But I do have to mention that you do need French if you wanna work because that's the official language of the province. But if you don't, you also have opportunities to work on campus because McGill is an English speaking university. There's also many ways to apply for financial aid and bursaries. So I would say it's possible. I personally, I can't speak much. I know that Montreal overall is relatively more affordable to live in like transportation rent all of that compared to the rest of canada so yeah i would say it's possible is mcgill like a cult how did you know what do you do for self-care and mental health as a uni student oh my god guys what i think is life-changing life-changing is waking up and setting the intention of having a good day when you live alone and you're a uni student there's definitely more flexibility with your time so what i did is i took time to establish my own personal morning routine you know like i am not a morning person 
at all I do not like to wake up and go to class but if I have an 8 30 in the morning then I have an 8 30 in the morning so what I do is I wake up and I establish my own morning routine to feed myself good energy do the things that I enjoy you know whether it's reading YouTube uh, Netflix even if it's just having coffee and listening to music you know something that I enjoy that puts me in a good mood I think that mental health is just all about feeding yourself good energy whatever that that is for you whether it's spending time with your friends spending time alone you know like meditating anything you know whatever it is that works for you but speaking of friends like I said earlier you have full control over the energy that you allow into your life like when you're in uni it's not like high school where you are forced to see the same people every single day you know so personally I don't surround myself with people that I find draining or dramatic or narcissistic like going to mcgill or just being in uni in general you have so much on your plate and your energy can be drained so quickly so yeah i just i don't surround myself with people like that just because it's not good for your mental health you know like i don't need that in my life is it easy to get into one of the top u.s schools as a graduate student after mcgill i honestly don't know much about u.s schools so i can't say much but in the end of the day wherever you go it's your gpa that really matters you know i do have to say that name matters you know and like mcgill is the harvard of canada so i feel like having a degree from mcgill it it means something, you know? Is it difficult to be accepted as an international student? But like I said before, McGill just judges your application based on your grades. And based on my research, the acceptance rate for international students at McGill is 46%. Does McGill accept people from Mauritius? Did I pronounce that right? Yes, it does. McGill actually has a McGill Mauritian student organization on campus which aims to spread their culture to the students within and outside of the McGill community. What are the best clubs, restaurants, and bars? So I actually have this written down on my laptop. Okay, so my favorite club is Ecole on Saturdays, but each uni kind of has a club where all their students go to. Like for example, all Concordia students go to Camp because it's right there. And like all McGill students go to Cafe Campus on Tuesdays because it's throwback night. But I feel like Cafe Campus is like a first year second year thing but anyways a lot of mcgill students go to tipsy cow honestly i've never been i don't know if it's a club or if it's a bar from what i've seen you can get drinks from anywhere like you don't necessarily have to go to a bar but i know that a lot of people like to go to warehouse which is a bar on crescent and a lot of the bars are on crescent so you're gonna find lots of the students or just a lot of people in that area anyway my favorite restaurants i have a lot but my favorite one is three breasters or three brewers however you pronounce it but it's actually the best oh my god guys weinstein and gambinos has the best lasagna in the world oh my god guys garage beirut has the best lebanese food i can find in montreal okay, there's also this place called three amigos and i love it it's a mexican restaurant and it's vibey you know i always go there with my friends there's also La Belle et La Boeuf, and I don't really like their food that much, but I like the vibe of the restaurant, you know, because they always dim the lights and they play like fun music and they have a bunch of screens so you can watch the matches and stuff. And me and my sister, we'd always get chicken wings and we'd watch the match and we just, we'd have a good time. Oh my God, guys, the best brunch place ever is called barley and it's not in downtown downtown but it's so close and it's so good oh my god guys i don't know if i've told you about this before but my favorite like fast food place that's also healthy is called poulet rouge i know i definitely butchered that name it's basically a rice bowl or a quinoa bowl and it comes with grilled chicken and you choose the flavor and then you can add as many toppings and as many sauces or cheeses or whatever that you like on it and it's so so good it's kind of like a chipotle bowl but it's halal and it's healthier so it tastes so much better do you have any idea about continuing studies at mcgill okay honestly i don't know much about them other than the fact that they offer 
daytime, evening, and weekend classes that are both in person and online. But I added a link in the description box down below where you're gonna find all the information that you need about continuing studies at McGill. Okay, what type of clothes and shoes should I bring if I'm coming in early August? August and September is when it's still warm, like it's summer, but it gets chilly at night. So I would say bring your summer clothes, but don't overdo it because it does not last long, trust me. October is when fall starts, but fall literally lasts like 20 minutes. And then November and December is when it starts to get really cold, but it's not the harsh winter yet. I would say that you would kind of need similar things for fall and winter. Coats, jackets, hoodies, long sleeve shirts, turtlenecks, cute boots layers like thermals undergarments scarves gloves all of that do not underestimate how cold canada gets also make sure you have thick socks with you all the time trust me your feet if your toes freeze you're gonna be in pain like it's not just like oh i'm cold like no like i'm in pain type of thing like i said make sure you bring thermals or like undergarments to be wearing under your clothes and like i said fall and winter you're it's gonna be similar type of clothing the only difference is in winter you're just gonna be layering up more you can wear a hoodie in fall but in winter you'll also be wearing it with an undershirt or a thermal and then like your winter coat on top and instead of sneakers you're gonna be wearing boots you know that type of thing okay so if you're going in august then you're probably gonna travel back home in december and i would say when you go back in december leave all your summer clothes there because january and february is when harsh winter starts you know it's gonna be cold and those two are the worst months and after that it isn't so bad but it stays cold until may you know like you can't be wearing your summer clothes you'll get cold <laughs> okay these two questions are kind of similar how do you organize your time like going to the gym and hanging out with friends What's your schedule like and how is it balancing work and friends simultaneously? Oh my god guys, plan your work and work your plan. I cannot fathom how important it is to plan ahead. Like, I'm not gonna lie, online classes and in-person classes are so different. Like, to schedule your time or to be flexible in online classes is so much more difficult because you're constantly working, every day is the same, like you have lectures all the time, like it's just, like there's no routine. But when I was in person, it was so easy for me to organize my time. Like for me, I had a routine, okay? If I had an 8 a.m. class, I would wake up, go to my 8 a.m., and when I'm done, I would go to the library on campus, work for as long and as much as i can to get things on my to-do list done you know and i would actually work like a machine and then when i'm done with that i would finish up whatever classes i had left for the day and i would be done by like 2 p.m max and then i would be free for the rest of the day i had the whole day to do whatever i wanted and then if i didn't have class in the morning i would wake up chill do whatever i want and then when i'm ready to start working i'd go to the concordia library because it's right next to me and again there i would work like a machine just to get things off my to-do list done and then when i have class i'd go to campus get all my classes done and then i'd be free for the entire day to just do whatever i want and honestly i would do that because at mcgill there is no room for procrastination so i just wanted to get everything out of my system i'd get everything done during the day and have like the night time for me but i'm not gonna lie it's not always like that because during midterm season and during exam season you would find me in the library until midnight like there's much much less flexibility but that's that's fine because if you're worried about seeing your friends then all your friends are doing the exact same thing so you're gonna be at the library the whole time but you're gonna be with them you know you're still gonna be with your friends you can be studying you can be taking breaks you can be hanging out like it's so chill you know what is your biggest culture shock oh my god guys but basically if you guys don't already know this I'm originally Lebanese I was raised in and I grew up in the United Arab Emirates and then when I was 16 17 i moved to canada for uni so the middle eastern society is a collectivist society you know and we're all about family and community and in the western society it's very individualistic and i'm not saying that's awful but it does mean that 
the way that people interact is different, you know, and that affects the way that you build and maintain relationships. And again, I'm not saying this is better, this is worse, it's just, it's different. And that was the biggest culture shock for me. Were you required to write a personal essay when registering at McGill? By the way, I love watching your videos so much. Really inspired me to want to study at McGill. I love you! To answer your question, no. I'm pretty sure if you're applying for a scholarship, then you do have to write some sort of essay. Something like, oh, if you could have dinner with one person, or if you could blah blah blah, like those types of essays. But just for the regular application process, no, you're not required to write a personal essay. Last but not least, does McGill have foundations? I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea. <laughs> but anyways guys, to everyone who sent in their questions, thank you so much and I hope that this video answers all your questions. And to all you incoming McGill students, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed recording it. Make sure to like, comment, and share this video. And as always, if you guys are looking for more content like this, then make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification button so you guys get notified every single time I make a post. I'll see you guys next week.